Hi, this is Dr. Red Allenside in Arlington. You know, I get asked all the time, Red, what technology do you recommend? What technology do you use for your labioplasties? How do you get those edges so precise? How do you avoid all that burn on those edges? Because when I use lasers or standard cautery, I just get too much burns, the edges bubble well. Since 2005, I've been using radio frequency surgery. So I want to make this video so you understand what radio surgery is. I used to use a device called Elman, and now Elman has been acquired by a company called Sonequence. They're actually the same company, just different names. And Sonequence has been the number one leader in radio surgery, at least for gynecology worldwide. And so I want to show you what can be done with radio surgery for labial surgery, vaginal surgery, even anal skin tags and buried clitorises and things like that. So watch this video. It's pretty interesting and I hope you like it. And at the very end, I'm going to tease you with the newest update on bipolar radio surgery. Enjoy the video. I do a chicken lab, it's world famous chicken lab, and we compare devices, both standard cautery, 980 diode, and this very precise radio surgical device with a fine hair tip. It's able to cut tissue with minimal lateral spread. It uses radio waves right in front of it, it dissipates water, and the water, water explodes and it cuts very precisely. I use it for precision incisions such as this on labia minora. I do my A incisions in this area using the radio frequency device such as this to prevent dog ear formation. It is unmatched in its precision with its lateral thermal spread of about 10 to 20 microns. It's very safe in tight areas. It doesn't cause um, a great deal of heat damage at all. And it's very safe to use along the nerves right below um, the clitoris, on the frenulum. There is no edge bubbling when you do surgery with this device and minimal tissue retraction. And so this is quite precise in that whatever you cut will stay there with minimal shrinkage. It's able to remove dog ears and it is quite useful to prevent these things from sticking out after you do your surgery. Sometimes you're not very careful and dog ears stick out. You can also feather with this device, do excision and feathering, um, which are the keys to revision surgery for the labia. Now you can try using CO2 laser or other devices, but it does not have the precision of this device. You can see here how we feather the edges and how we trim off precise areas of labial tissue so that you get the exact refined edge that you're looking for. Your patients will appreciate this because it is exceptionally precise. I can use this for my standard labioplasty also where I leave more tissue or I can use this for my Barbie look labioplasties. You can see how precise this is and how the lateral thermal spread is minimal, both on the lateral and medial aspects. Now this is not very good with hemostasis, so you will need standard cautery or pull this bipolar radio frequency device out. This device is very fine, about a one millimeter tip, and it's able to dissect tissues quite precisely. And with a little change in your technique, you can also obtain good hemostasis. You hold tissues very softly and you press your foot pedal down, and then it's able to um, cauterize for you with a bipolar technique. Again, I always use my standard cautery as my backup in case I do have bleeding. Now you can see here, using this right below the, the clitoris, right on the frenulum, and you can use this um, for precise surgery or more debulking procedures. You can see this patient has a very bulky labia minora, and I'm able to control the bleeding with this bipolar cautery. And if I still have bleeding, I pull out my standard cautery unit. I also use radio frequency surgery for revision labioplasty, and I believe this to be the finest device made for revision surgeries to smooth out the edges, to refine tissues. Um, here you see me marking a prior labioplasty that the patient does not like because the edges didn't heal as, as fine as she wanted. She had seen a, a plastic surgeon who did the labioplasty and she wants it revised. She wants also a, a hood reduction 
um, on both sides. You can see that this can be used in the perineum and you can have precision perineoplasties performed. You can line up the edges quite well, trim the edges so that it lines up as precisely as possible so that the patient, when she heals up, will look like she never had a baby. It's very precise and you can use this both um, internally and externally. You can see here the precision to debulk um, labioplasties that did not go well. You can see how you can do these precision incisions right underneath the clitoris and right on the frenulum. Um, you can see here I'm debulking a great deal of tissue from this prior labioplasty. I'm incising in a 45 degree angle into the labia, both from the lateral and medial edges. Here I'm reducing the width of the clitoral hood. It's a pretty good size excision of this wedge here that you can see. And you can do this with both the unipolar or bipolar if you wanted to. This is clitoral hood contouring, so it's not just reduction of the clitoral hood, but we're doing a contouring treatment so that it looks quite precise. And you can see here how we've reduced the width of this entire upper portion of the clitoral hood by debulking and contouring it so that it's about two thirds reduced in lateral width. You can see how, how petite that is. Now on these final edges, you can do fine excision and feathering with radio frequency device. You can try this with CO2 lasers, but it won't be as precise. You can try it with 980 diode lasers, but you will have burnt tissue edges. So radio frequency is the best to work in these delicate uh, areas. You can do edge refinements. You can feather the edges until it all lines up. Another use for radio surgery is management of the dog ears. Let's say you, you did a labioplasty, and you can see here that the labia was reduced, but the top portion is still top heavy. So you can try to reduce the top heavy look by managing first the dog ears, and then doing a lateral hood reduction with this ultra precise device so that it does not have that top heavy appearance. Nothing's worse than having a petite labia and then a very wide clitoral hood. So this is a way that I perform my hood reductions so that it is not bulky up here. I'll also shrink these tissues down with standard cautery. Now you can see here, I need to do more feathering and I can do feathering and excisions. There's this little area that sticks out. So I'm going to excise this little area that protrudes out. And then once I do that, I'll refine it with the feathering technique. So you can go back from excision and feathering to give you the precise edges before you do your suturing on these areas. If the hood is overhanging and too large looking, you can debulk this area too. You can trim the edge of the lower portion of the clitoral hood and make it more refined and then close these with very fine 5 sutures. So these refinements can be also done um, for the labia majora. You can see here that I'm using the radio frequency tip to incise over my marked areas for a labia majoroplasty. So you can do these very precise light touch incisions into the tissues. And then once you, you incise over the, the skin edges, you can choose to remove the labia majora with unipolar, or as you see here, I've chosen to do it with bipolar um, cautery to control the bleeding. This is a little bit slower, but there is much less bleeding when you do it this way. You have to do it step by step and be patient and control the bleeding when you do these labia majoroplasties. Also, for those of you who do clitoral hood reductions, occasionally you'll have a keloid that occurs in the scar um, where the lateral hood reduction was done. Or even, let's say, a C-section scar or abdominal incision. These keloids can happen, and you can feather them with this device. The, the one wonderful thing about radio frequency device, after over um, 20 years of use of this device, I have not seen a keloid fr uh, form from this type of <clears throat> feathering procedure. You can see this area it has a firm keloid here. And so I went ahead and vaporized it flat and um, when she heals up, it'll be smooth. Uh, the color change will be evened out. She won't have that pale area uh, as prominent as before. And you can just keep palpating and flattening out any areas that are raised and have caused discomfort, tenderness, or just bulkiness. In this same patient, she wanted the edges feathered and refined. And so that's what we use uh, the radio device to smooth out these edges 
and to um, get rid of any raised areas to make it more even looking on both sides. So I call this feathering and refinement. You can use it on the labia, you can use it here on the lateral. Feathering with this, with this tip isn't enough, so I'm going to have to shrink this tissue. So I pull out my ball tip, and you can see that the ball tip is superior in bulk shrinkage of tissues. You can see that I'm able to touch these areas, it shrinks down, and it will become more symmetric as I work on an area more and more, layer by layer, to shrink it up until I'm um, about even in size. This will take about six weeks to heal. It'll have a white discharge. Um, I'm feathering this area. She wants to have a, a Barbie look now where there's minimal labia and a smooth edge. So I'm going to smoothen out these prior um, uh, incision lines from her prior labiaplasty. This is how it looks after. All those areas will have a discharge for about six weeks. Now you'll have patients also who've had genital mutilation or lichen sclerosis. This one had um, uh, female genital mu mutilation and so she wants this opened up. She is unable to have orgasms. Her clitoris is buried deep inside and so I'll make a vertical incision here, give it local anesthesia and use my precise radio frequency device which will have minimal lateral spread. It's a fine vertical incision. I know she has a clitoris under there. I'm going to identify it and then open up this area on top of the clitoris to give a little access, not, not to expose the clitoris completely, but provide it with access so that when she wants to, she can have it accessible. You can also define the frenulum. You can see here that it's, it's um, uh, quite small and um, because of the prior surgery. So I'm going to define it so that it can be um, right below the clitoris and definable. You have to be careful because the vessels are on top of the clitoris and you don't want to um, hit those. Um, if you do, they're small vessels that can be cauterized easily. You can refine these edges with this pinpoint tip and you can um, make it look as normal as possible and you will have to have what we call Q-tip exercises that we teach the patient to keep these edges from agglutinating together during her six-week recovery. This is a patient with lichen sclerosis who has her clitoris completely buried and this is a similar procedure but not only do you have to do a mechanical incision and exposure of the clitoris, this is combined with platelet-rich plasma to um, prevent the formation of adhesions again and to help control the lichen sclerosis. You can see here I'm doing the same procedure and defining the frenulum, but I won't show it on this video, but I do inject either platelet-rich plasma or amniotic fluid with a great deal of cytokines to reduce the inflammation. We do this uh, injection about once a year, and now this patient's about three years out, and she has had uh, quite a good success. I'm defining the frenulum a little bit more because it's been um, stuck with her lichen sclerosis, and now we're trying to achieve normal anatomy. She is able to uh, achieve orgasms now. She has access to her clitoris. Her frenulum is freely mobile. You can see here it's freely mobile. She has access to it and she's able to have normal sexual relations and sensitivity. Another use for radiofrequency is for anal skin tags. Um, I don't take care of active hemorrhoids, but when they're dried up and you have anal skin tags such as these, you can choose to excise them or you can choose to vaporize them. In this patient, I wanna show you both techniques. She has um, uh, a desire to have her per perineum more petite, so I went and um, did a small perineoplasty so she wouldn't have this bulge of tissue in the middle. So I'm excising this perineal tissue, and then I'm going to also excise this rigid, firm external anal skin tag. This is very firm. It's, it's pretty rock hard, and it's uncomfortable for her. This is under local. She's awake, and we've given her uh, local anesthetic. So I've excised this, and now I'm, I'm gonna suture it up. As you can see, it's all sutured up in multiple layers and I'll pull out my ball and shrink up the other tissues that are not firm or are just um, sticking out, such as this little area right here, it's still sticking out, and this lower area. I'm gonna use my ball to flatten it so that this will pull in as it heals and it'll have a nice anal appearance. Let's like take a look at some of the before and afters. Here's a before, immediately after, and 
um, after surgery for a Barbie look labioplasty. Here's a majora and a minora combination before and after. You can see how precise these edges are. Here's a labia majoroplasty with, with bulking, debulking, and fat pad removal. Here is a botched labioplasty with irregular edges. We refine it, we feather it, we smoothen it, and six to eight weeks later, see how smooth and beautiful it is. This is the lady with the lichen sclerosis that we took care of, and that's the before, and this is the immediately after. And then as she heals up, you can see now the frenulum are free and the clitoris uh, is also available. You can see here the anal skin tag that we excised and feathered. It looks beautiful when she's all healed up. So fast forward 2025, there's a new king on the block, Sonequins. Sonequins is this device that's radio frequency and is now the owner of Elman, the technology you just saw. I designed this new bipolar tip, very precise and very able to dissect and get good hemostasis. There are other shapes that you can get. And these are some of the examples for you for both radio frequency, bipolar and unipolar. Here is the bipolar forceps, the Allen Sod forceps, we call it the A1, able to trim labia and also able to trim perineal tissues also. So you can do entire labioplasties, you can do vaginoplasties with this device and get beautiful results with great blood control and also extreme precision. You can see how we can get that here. Now I'm gonna show you an entire labioplasty and clitoral hood reduction case played at eight times the speed using this wonderful Sonequence device, both the unipolar and the bipolar cautery. You can see that we're able to precisely remove just the amount of tissue you need to give you that Barbie look or that hybrid look labioplasty that you want. You can trim down the clitoral hood very precisely. You can smoothen out all the edges, make sure that they all match. This device is wonderful for this type of procedure. And then when you suture it all up, all the edges line up pretty perfect together. And this is how it looks when you're done. It's quite beautiful. What a precise device. This is what I use in my office and I recommend it to all the surgeons that are training with me. Isn't that beautiful? Before and afters for you. Take care, hope you enjoyed this video.